in the net, in the net, in the net. <laughs> That's a big perch. That is a big perch. Come on. That looks like a big perch. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thanks for choosing to watch the video. I cannot believe that the time has come. I'm absolutely buzzing to be out there perch fishing again. The temperatures are just starting to drop, so it definitely feels like time. As well as my own fishing, I've been out there filming perch masters, but more about that later in the video. Uh, for now, in this one, you're gonna join me on a new stretch of river, so it really gives me the opportunity to show you how I go about trying to search out these big perch and uh, hopefully catch them. It's kind of late autumn, you know, we're coming into October. Um, you can feel the temperatures have dropped, but it's still, you know, we haven't hit that really cold period that we're going to hit in winter. So the fish should be reasonably active. And this, of course, is going to make our search a little bit easier, hopefully. I'm going to start off by using the searching lures. Um, you might have seen from the previous videos, I have spoken about separating searching lures to sort of like your finesse lures, you know, those lures that you're gonna to use to convert more fish on the bank, hopefully once you've found them. But I am gonna start on the searching lures, so let's have a look at those. One lure that I have found is really good for searching is the Nimble, the Crazy Fish Nimble. I've got those in a few sizes, the 1.6, 2.5, and the big boy, the four-incher. Um, I keep the colors of the Nimbles fairly muted. You know, I don't, I don't like using them in bright colours necessarily, but I do find them a really good searching lure. Also, I'm using the squirrelies. Um, as, as a minimum, I will want those in three colours. I want a really light colour, so like the silverfish, a white colour. Other end of the spectrum, I will want the dark lord, so go white and dark. And then, as, as I've discussed before in some of my videos, I then want one that's right down the middle, something neutral, uh, if I'm not wanting to create as much of a silhouette uh, and something just a little bit more subtle, I think the real ale is a, is a killer colour as well. Both of these will be fished at a moderate pace. At this time of year, I'm going to be keeping the lure up off the bottom more than I normally would once it gets cold. So yeah, I might drop them down on the deck now and then, but mainly I'm fishing them sort of like mid-water. Um, I'm expecting the fish to be more active, hasn't got really cold yet, and yeah, if I'm fishing in mid-water at a reasonable pace, hopefully, even if they're not really up for feeding, I might be able to bring on sort of reaction strikes and stuff like that. My final searching lures will be the crankbaits. I'm going to be switching between a few crankbaits. Some of them include the Savage Gear Gobi. Uh, I also like the Salmo Rattling Hornet. And finally, I'll also be chucking on the West End Buzz Bite. All cracking crankbaits that can be fished quite aggressively up in the water uh, certainly allowing me to move around quite quickly, cover a lot of river, which is what I feel I need to do if I'm going to find some of these perch. My finesse lures are obviously the lures I'm going to switch to once I've found some fish or a decent stamp of fish, you know, when I'm then really wanting to pick a spot to bits. For that, as you know, I really love a stick bait. Uh, I'll be using the squirms. Uh, again, I want those in a few colours. Love the Dark Lord, love Bruiser, and a particular favourite of mine last year, and I'll be using a fair amount on this session, hopefully if I do find them, and that's the Squirms in Lobworm. So there you go, that's the lures. Of course, I'm gonna start with those searching lures, gonna cover lots of river, and just gonna really enjoy being out perch fishing again. There we are, messing about with crankbaits. Not a monster, but it's a start. Okay, let's hit it. There we are. There's another nice little mid-water perch. 
That is not the big one we're after. So I will slip him back. See if we can catch up with that big one. Watch him. What a big fish! He's <laughs> 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 got a hump on his head. Dad got the trace on. There we go. Yeah, his hump head. So, as you can see, the crank baits a fantastic bait. Um, I am using them with light traces and just as well because as you can see they are attract attracting the attention of the pike which can happen so I think what I'm going to do there does seem to be quite a few pike in the stretch I'm just going to ease off the crankbaits for a bit I think so I started using nimbles and squirrelies and eventually I started to catch up with some better fish there we go oh it's quite good oh yes that was slow oh it's come off Oh, that's a decent one. You ain't getting away. And there we are. First half decent one of the new perp season. First time out with lures. And a lovely, lovely perch to get things going. I'm really pleased that I was using light traces still on my lures. Uh, because I was still picking up the odd pike, including this one that's probably the most incredible pike I've ever caught. There we go. Oh, I had to get some video of this little fella. Look at his markings. I mean, just incredible. Look. Absolutely incredible. Go on, you little tiger. Away you go. What I thought might be interesting was for me to quickly take through you all the bits and pieces that I take out on the bank, especially when I'm sort of like walking around. You might have noticed that I've got this rather snazzy vest on. I think it's a fly fishing vest. Um, it's because I want a lot of stuff on my front so I can just get to it really quickly. You know, I don't want to waste time messing around. I've got a rucksack, but to be honest, I hate taking that off my back and going into it and, and just stopping and starting like that. I'd rather just have some things to hand. And last couple of seasons, I've just found wearing a vest works for me. So in this bottom pocket, I've got me sort of like me Flotex lures in there, some of finesse stuff. Um, up here, I've got my jerk baits, so you know, like my hard baits up there. Over here, I've got some sort of like spools of line, you know, my fluorocarbon, I've got some traces, scissors, forceps. In the bottom pocket, I've got a little box that's full of crank baits. Again, I can chop and change those quite quickly without having to go into the bag. And I've also got a little box that's just got some bits of terminal tackle in. But most important are these two pockets, because these contain my pocket mash. What is pocket mash, I hear you ask? Well, here it is. That's my Flotex pocket mash. And there's some more pocket mash from the pocket next door. Make sure you tell me in the comments if when you go out on the bank, you've got a horrible ball of unorganized pocket mash in your pocket, just like me. I bet you do. Mmm, lovely pocket mash. As I said, I do have a rucksack on my back. It's uh, the Spro Freestyle One. Uh, it's got a compartment at the top. In there, I've got my camera equipment, the scales, uh, some extra jig heads. Uh, at the bottom, I can actually fit four trays of lures in the bottom part of the bag. To be honest, I only put three trays in there because that leaves a bit of space for a drink and some other bits. Onto the rucksack. As you can see, I've got my fast net. That's the snapper fast net. That just attaches via a net magnet. There's a magnet right at the base of the handle of these nets. Comes with the net. 
and it just attaches to the bag. You don't want to be carrying it around. So that's the perfect solution for that. And just on the bottom of the rucksack, so I've got my snapper unhooking that. That just leaves the rod. I'm asked quite frequently what a good all round rod is. And for me, I think this is it. If I was only going to take one rod out, it's the ZT. It's seven foot eight, two to 14 gram casting weight. I do like a rod that's got a bit of backbone, something that can set the hooks properly, can work lures really well, like cranks and twitch baits. And for me, th this rod can do everything. So this is the one that I will take. Uh, you will see me also in this video using more of a finesse rod that's a little bit shorter. And I think it's actually sort of like two to 10 gram or something like that. And that's the rod that I will use for drop shotting and stuff like that. Switch reels, normally braid, that's around about 11 pound braking strain. Uh, fluorocarbon leader, that'll be about 10 pound braking strain as well. And like I say, along this stretch, I have been using light traces because of the pipe. So there you go, that's me. Let me give you a twirl. That's all the bits that I take out on the bank to allow me to stay mobile whilst I'm trying to hunt out these incredible perch. I was back a few days later in the only spot where I'd caught something half decent. This time I'd gone in with the Ned rig, just slowly bumping a squirm along the bottom. Well, get in. Well, another one followed this one in while I was playing it. Unbelievable to watch. Uh, yeah, only about 30, it was well, it's about 37, 38 centimeters long. But I don't think he weighs much. They just haven't got any depth at the moment. Uh, but still nice to be out here catching them. As the light faded and the bites dried up a bit, I decided to switch up the profile of the lure and put on a Reggie. This was immediately slammed by what I thought was the big perch that I've been looking for. I said, I'm not gonna mess about with the camera. It's getting dark. I really wanna get that perch. That, quite a nice chub. I got the chub back quickly with no photos, nothing like that, because I was completely in big perch mode. Uh, but unfortunately, I was losing the light too quickly and I was going to have to come back another day. Suddenly, for whatever reason, that chub started to form a bit of a pattern across the next session. <laughs> Listen to me each time I hook one. Please be a perch, please be a perch. I think it could be a perch. Oh no, it's a chub. Oh, I slammed it though. Oh, I thought that was the perch was after. Nice chub though. We won't mess about with the camera, not the big camera anyway. But quite a nice chub. Slammed a creature bait, fish mid water. Oof. Be a perch, be a perch, be a perch. Getting a bit big to be a perch. But it could be if it's a perch, it's a big one. Oh, it's a chub. Oh, these chub on these lures. Incredible. Love these nimbles. It's quite a good one as well. Getting some clonkers. Having quite a few of these. Every time I hook one, I think I've got the perch of my dreams. <laughs> but yeah, they are loving the creature baits, they're all over them. Uh, but 
yeah, we'll keep going. Maybe we'll switch up the lures. So the chub were loving my nimbles that were being fished at a reasonable pace mid-water. I tried slowing them down, but I was still getting hit by chub. Obviously quite a lot of chub in the section. Uh, I didn't feel like I was getting closer to a decent perch. Didn't even really know if really decent perch were present. I bumped into the odd other angler that suggested that there was, but I hadn't, hadn't really seen any myself. I decided in the next session just to pretty much start over, just to get on my toes again, go searching, hopefully catch up with the species that I'm actually trying to catch. So I covered plenty of swims. I was still sticking to my, my squirrelies and my nimbles. I was catching plenty of perch, but to be honest, I wasn't really setting the world on fire um, until eventually I moved into a swim and I found what I was looking for. I don't like the look of this area. A lot of cover. I can imagine predators sitting around here. Very much so. There we go. Oh, perch. Quite a nice one too. Smash it. You will do. Lovely. Put that one down there in the net. I'm going to see if there's more down there. Dearly sound bigger. Yes! <gasps> that was a big one. Oh. Okay, so absolute nightmare. Caught this one. Uh, I put him in the net just to see if there were bigger, was a bigger fish down there and there was. It inhaled the lure and somehow I didn't hook it. I don't know how. Uh, considerably bigger than this, you know. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it was a three pounder. <laughs> there we go, look. Don't know if you can see that, but squirms all flavoured up. Swap one of those on. I mean, I know they're here, so. I might just fish really slow with this in the holes. Hopefully we'll get one. Here we go. Right, hopefully that is the perch. Yep, it is a perch. Well, yes. that worked, that little trick. Not as big as the one that I lost mind. And there we are, it's another one. A little bit bigger, this time on a squirm. A flavoured squirm. Um, yeah. I've obviously found a spot that they like. Right, fish. Yep, decent perch. I'm losing the light a bit, so I'm not gonna mess about, but they are getting a little bit bigger. It's quite a nice one. I still want that big one. <laughs> it came and took my lure. Come back. Mixed feelings about that, to be honest. Gutted, that was a proper big one right at my feet. Somehow pulled the lure out of its mouth. Um, on a positive note, I haven't fished for perch down this stretch. Um, and it's nice to know they're here. They are definitely here. Um, it's now just a matter of just keep, keep hitting this spot now and hopefully getting it, getting another chance. <laughs> I had two more very modest perch before ending what was really quite a frustrating session, but at least I had found some fish, a better stamp of fish too. I'm a sucker for punishment, so vowed to come back the very next morning. So you won't believe it, came back, fished for about half an hour or so, and I have had a nice one. Don't know if it was the one that I missed yesterday, but before we look at that, I just want to quickly show you well, I had it on, and it was this. It was the drop shot. It's how I ended last season. I did a video uh, on the canal when I was drop shotting doing this. Half a squirrely. So that's a white silver fish. 
which I didn't know if that was going to work because the water's quite clear. Didn't know if I was going to have to use that a bit more natural. But yeah, I put it in the water. I'd switch from a Ned rig because there was quite a lot of crud on the bottom. Went onto the drop shot, exploring the far margin and had a nice perch within about five or 10 minutes. So there we are. That's what it was. Just half a white squirrely fished on the drop shot. So let's have a look at me catching this fish on the drop shot uh, from a new section of river, which makes it quite sweet. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, it's early morning. I don't know what this video is gonna come out like because it's, it's uh, night levels are fairly low. But anyway, I really dwelled on that <laughs> lost fish yesterday. That really hurt, it was quite painful put a fair amount of effort in on this stretch and uh, yeah to finally catch up with a decent fish and lose it like that uh, hurts so I'm back I'm gonna have another go I've got two rods with me which don't often do that but that's because I know where they are so I've got one that I'm gonna fish the Ned rig on I'm also gonna try the drop shot because like I say I'm not searching anymore I know they're there so I'm gonna pick that spot to bits hopefully I'll get another chance at a decent perch. Decided to try something else. We drop shot a squirrely over on the far bank. See if that gets what I'm after. Oh my God, that's a great cast, come on. Hopefully it's helping me out. Very clear water. Got a white squirrely because the low light at the moment I think I need to possibly put something more natural on. I'm going to set this a little bit lower. Go. Oh, it's a big perch. That is a big perch. Come on, concentrate. There we go. In the net, in the net, in the net, in the net. Yes, that's the one. So, exploring new parts of the river, uh, searching up and down, and then yesterday I found them. <laughs> there we are, cracking fish, 42, 43 centimetres, so, uh, you know, the sort of stamp we're looking for. Um, that one yesterday inhaled the lure at my feet and somehow I didn't look it, I don't know how. So to come back this morning and get this on a drop shot squirrely, I am absolutely chuffed. <laughs> so I was really, really pleased with that fish. Absolutely over the moon, but it didn't end there because I couldn't get another fish from that spot, but I got on my toes on the same stretch and managed to catch up with some more. Oh. 
flogged that spot to death. I couldn't find another fish. But look, <laughs> went searching and found this absolute beast. Real dark, gnarly number. I hope you've had a great start to your little fishing season. I'm so pleased to be out doing it again. Especially catching stunning, stunning dark creatures like this. Just incredible. I really hope the video kind of demonstrated how I switched between sort of searching lures and then into the sort of more sort of inert finesse sort of like methods and, and drop shotting. Like I said at the start, I have been out filming Perch Masters again and I've been out with someone that catches an insane amount of monster perch. This guy is an absolute Jedi. Completely mind-blowing stuff with tips and advice that is definitely going to help you catch more perch this winter. I cannot wait to share this with you. Keep an eye out for it. Maybe you should subscribe uh, so that you get a notification to make sure that you don't miss it. But that's me done for now. Uh, how awesome is it to be back out lure fishing for perch? If you're out there doing it, then be lucky and I'll see you in the next one.